Hey everyone, this is Aria and I hope you're doing well. In this tutorial, I want to show you the basics on how I created these generative art pieces using geometry nodes within Blender. Okay, so let's get started. Open up a new scene in Blender. I just want to point out that I'm using the latest version of Blender, which is version 3.3. And because geometry nodes are getting updated all the time, there is a chance that your version of geometry nodes is outdated. So just keep that in mind. And if you are running into issues, try to update to version 3.3 and you should be good to go. In our case here, we're going to be using curve primitives. So it doesn't really matter what kind of object we start with. So I'm going to show the default cubes in love and use that today. I'm not going to be using any lights or cameras in this tutorial, so I'm just going to delete them so that they're not in the way. I'm going to come down to the left side here and click and drag to bring up a new window. Then I'm going to click here and I'm going to select the geometry node editor. Then click new. Now you'll see that we've got an input and an output. And in our case, we're not using the cube, so I'm just going to select the input and hit delete. You'll notice that it disappears in our viewport because it's no longer using the geometry of the cube. It looks like the default cube got deleted after all. Bye bye. The next thing we want to do is add a curve primitive. So I'm going to hover in the geometry nodes and just like adding anything else in Blender, we can hit shift A. Then we're going to go into curve primitives and let's select star. The next thing we want to do is just connect our star to the group output. And now you'll see that it's showing our curve star. And the really cool thing with geometry nodes is now that we have this, we have a line in between where we can do multiple different changes. The first thing that we're going to do is fill this curve. So we're going to hit shift A and type in fill. Then we're going to select this option fill curve and drop that right in. Now we've got a face for our curve. You'll notice that it's lying flat on the ground, so we just want to rotate this on the Y axis by 90 degrees. So we're going to hit Shift A, type in Transform, and then just drop this in here. We want to rotate this on the Y axis, so we're going to select this and type in 90. Now I just want to change the shape of the star a little bit, so I'm going to go back to the star here, and I'm going to change the inner radius to 0.5. You'll notice now that the inner radius has changed to 0.5. In my animations, I have multiple layers going back further, and as they go back, they get larger. So, of course, you could just duplicate this a bunch of times and change the radius. But there's a much more procedural and easy way to do this by just taking what we have here and using this as an instance. How we're going to do that is add an instance on points. So, I'm going to hit Shift A, search, and type in instance. Then you'll see the option here, instance on points, make sure it's this one, not two. Then we'll just drop that right in there. You'll notice that it's going into the points input and that's not really what we want because what's happening is the instance on point is actually taking the star as the form. And this is where you'd place the instances. So if I just quickly add a sphere, drop this into the instance, make this a bit smaller You'll notice that it puts a sphere on each of the points of our star. If we were to add a resample curve, set this to something like 100, you'll see now that it actually goes and adds more points along our star. We don't need this, so I'm just going to delete it. As well, we're not going to use this method, so I'm also going to delete the UV sphere. And like I said before, we actually want to use the star as the instance, so we're going to click here, drag this, and put it into the instance slot. Now that we have our instance, we need to also add something to place these instances on. In this case, we just want to use a mesh line. So I'm going to hit Shift A and go down to Mesh Primitives and I'm going to select Mesh Line. I'm just going to drop this above and then hook this into the points. Then you'll see if I zoom out, we have a bunch of our stars going straight up on the Z axis. And there's 10 of them. So if you look here, you'll see the count is 10. And the offset is on the Z axis, so we're going to change that to the X axis. So I'm just going to type in 0 on the Z and then go up to the X axis and type in minus 1. Now you can see that we have our 10 instances and they're now traveling along the X axis. You'll notice in my animation, things start out really small and they gradually get bigger. 
So what we need to do is scale these along the mesh line and as it gets further back, it gets larger. In our case, we're actually going to do 30 copies of these, so I'm going to select the count and type in 30. Now we're finished with this mesh line, so I'm just going to minimize it just so that it's not in the way. So you'll see now that we have 30 copies of our star, but they're all the same size. So what we want to happen is we want them to start at the beginning of the mesh line being really small, and as they head to the back, they gradually get larger and larger. There is a very simple way to do that, and we can use the scale property for this using an index node. So I'm just going to hit search and type in index, drop this here, and then I'm just going to connect this directly to the scale. Then if I zoom out, you'll see that things are gradually getting larger as they move along the curve. And believe it or not, we have almost all the nodes we need to make this work. This is a bit large, so what I'm going to do is add a transform node, drop this right before the group output, then I'm just going to click and drag to select all these and type in 0.2. So what we want to do is actually duplicate all of these first set of nodes up to the instance and make a copy of them. So how we do that is hit shift D, then we can just drag it down and drop this right underneath. Next, we want to join our two different versions, so I'm going to hit Shift A, search, and type in Join Geometry. If I just drop this right before the Transform node, I can then grab this instance and drop it in, and now we've got two exact copies. So what we want to do is offset this bit, so I'm going to hit Shift A and add an additional Transform node. Then if I drop this here, we can then click on the X axis and type in 0.5. And now you'll see the duplication. At this point, we're getting pretty close to the end, but what we need to do is give this some motion. And of course, we need to give both sides motion, so I'm going to add a new transform to the top line as well. Then, of course, you'll see that we have an exact duplicate all the way through except for our offset. But of course, we also want them to go in opposite directions. In this case, you'll see that our x-axis is traveling through the center of our star, so that's the axis we want to rotate on. Just make sure that you're on frame 1. Then we can right-click the x-rotation and add a single keyframe. We're going to do the same with the bottom transform here, so right-click on the x-rotation and add a single keyframe. You'll notice that if I click this transform, we're not seeing any keyframes down here. If you're trying to find where your keyframes are, just make sure to select the container object. We want to rotate these in opposite directions, so I'm just going to click here to jump to the end frame. This can be as long as you want it, I'm just going to use the default for this tutorial. But no matter how long your animation is, you always want to go one frame past the end, just so that when our animation gets right to the end, it doesn't duplicate one of the frames, it's just going to jump back to frame 1. You can choose whatever rotation that you want to have, but in this case, I'm just going to use 180 degrees. Keep in mind, this may depend on your shape. You may need to do a full rotation. So if you do change the shape of your star or add an uneven amount of points, then just make sure that you're using 360 degrees or 720 or multiples of 360, just so that it does a full rotation. I'm going to type in 180, then right click and add a new keyframe. And for our copy, instead of doing 180, we want to do negative 180. And insert a keyframe. Then if I hit play, you'll already see that we have a pretty basic animation. You'll notice that it slows down at the beginning and the end, so if you do want to change that, again you just need to click each of these transforms. And set the keying from Bezier to Linear. We're not seeing our keyframes here because we need to select our container and then the keys will show up. Then hovering over the timeline we can hit A to select everything and then T and select linear. Let's select the bottom one as well. Make sure that you've got both keys selected, hit T and select linear. If you do create a version of this, I'd love to see it so make sure to tag me on any social media at ariafaithjones. Make sure to like and hit that subscribe button. One thing that I've done with these animations is create physical versions of them using a 3D printer. And there's a couple more nodes that you're going to want to add to this to make that happen. So stay tuned for that video. I'm going to be dropping that soon. Okay, I hope to see you soon. Bye!